Hey guys, I want to talk you through what we did in class on Wednesday for refutation in exposition. So before I do that, I want to encourage you to go look at your teacher's guide and read this lesson thoroughly. It's really, really good. And I think this is an important life skill for our kids to learn how to do. So anyway, um, here's how we approached it. First of all, last week in class, we had built this really fantastic Annie chart in class. We had a lot of great conversation and our class issue was whether Bear should have forced Crispin to take the oath becoming his bond servant. So we built this Annie chart in class that when I got home, I typed it up into um, some clear points. Now this one is the page that my son used in class. I had them um, do some stuff with it and so it's a little marked up, but that's okay. So I told them, I was like, I want you guys to take this chart and I want you to think about the reasons that we had said, yes, Bear should have forced Crispin to take the oath becoming his bond servant and figure, these are the, these are the categories. We had one, two, three, four, five categories and a couple of random reasons. I said, I want you to pick your top three favorites. Now I will tell you on this piece of paper, because this is Joel's paper he used in class, that the markings and pencil are his as a class we ended up doing what I have highlighted and marked up in green so after conversation and um, deliberation we ended up choosing as a class these three issues and then we discussed what order they should go in so we did the same thing for the affirmative and for the negative I um, wanted them to pick their best reasons and then we voted as a class, are we gonna argue affirmative or are we gonna argue negative? So we ended up choosing affirmative and um, it was it was pretty close actually. There were a number of kids that wanted to go negative. So that made it interesting. So what we did is once we picked our three, I was like, um, so now that we've chosen our categories for affirmative, we are also going to use our negative and why do you think that is? I can't remember exactly how we did it, but I remember one one kid in class actually piped up and was like, oh, we're going to do a counter argument. And I was like, yeah. So anyway, that was really cool. So we talked through these three reasons and we began our um, outline, which actually looked like this. If these were our three, three main reasons that uh, Crispin was alone and vulnerable, that Bear could help Crispin and then Crispin could help Bear. Those were the ones that they voted their best three reasons. So we began to build our outline and we did this on the whiteboard. And so I just have written it up here because I can't look at the picture on the whiteboard right now. Anyway, so we have our exordium, which we did not take the time to figure out because I knew we were gonna need more time for reputation. Our agreement, everyone agrees that Crispin is alone. Um, what we disagree on is whether he should have taken the oath or should not have taken the oath. And I should mention that we ended up tweaking our class issue, which is totally cool to do at this point. I, you can tell that we originally said whether Bear should have forced Crispin to take the oath. We ended up deciding that most of our reasons really better fit um, Crispin being the one making the decision. So whether Crispin should have taken the oath, becoming Bear's bondservant. So um, after... I mean, that, that's going to happen. The more you dig in, the more you think about your stuff, the more you tweak things and you realize it's actually better written a little bit different way. So that's totally okay when we do that. Anyway, so we have our thesis and our counter thesis there. Our distribution is he should have taken the oath for three reasons. And again, our three main reasons that we chose over here, highlighted in green, we have listed as our three main sub proofs. Now, we did not take the time to fill this part out right here because I wanted to get on to the refutation. But right here is where we would take our three reasons here and we would go and pick three reasons in each of those columns to help support our main proofs. So then we got into the idea of um, the fact that up here where we had our disagreement that we really need to be able to answer that person who disagrees with us. So we need to understand their point of view and we need to be able to have an answer prepared for, for that disagreement. So that's when we talked about our refutation. So at that point, 
since we've already done all of the work, we know what the people who disagree with us, disagree with us think. And all of that information is on our negative. So we had our conversation. Now this time we're only going to have two reasons. In the teacher guide it talks about how you don't want to overpower your affirmative. So we're going to only choose two reasons for the negative. And I think we picked that Bear could be dangerous and that Crispin would not be free. So we um, walked through, I'm sorry, got papers everywhere. We walked through this chart right here. Okay, this is essentially the same worksheet that's in the workbook. It's just a little bit made to look like a chart. So we have our thesis statement, we have our counter thesis, and we chose first and foremost that Bear was dangerous. And out of all of our reasons, in the dangerous column, these were the three that we picked. He seemed like a crazy man, he had a knife, and he was a stranger, and we know we're not supposed to really fully trust strangers. Now, after thinking about that and talking about that, we need to explain why though these reasons here are not sufficient enough for us to change our mind on our original thesis. So, believe it or not, if you go back to our Annie chart, we had all of this information here. One of our categories that we had was that clues that Bear's actually a good guy. So we had this stuff down here, so we ended up pulling from here. We already had all of this ready to go. So this is what we ended up using for our counter to those who disagree with us. Those who say that Crispin should not take the oath because Bear is dangerous. I mean, after all, he seemed crazy, he had a knife, and he was a stranger. So here's our counter to that. Well, he was, after all, in a church by himself, and he was singing a beautiful hymn. Clearly, he was worshiping God, and that should have eased Crispin's concerns. So anyway, so there is our answer to those who come against our thesis. So then we have to do it again. So our next one that we chose, sorry, was that Crispin would not be free. So we looked at our negative chart over here. We have Crispin would not be free and we have all of these reasons to choose from. So we decided to, um, we, this is what we picked. Let's see, he would not be able to make his own decisions. He'd have to do whatever Bear tells him to, which could in the end, make his life even more difficult than it already was. Was he jumping from the frying pan into the fire? So then we have to counter that. And this is what they came up with, that Bear ends up helping him. Eventually, Bear becomes like a father to him. So this is our counter to somebody who says um, that Crispin would not be free. So in the act of him giving up his independence, he actually ends up saving himself, which, as you guys can all tell where I'm going, is a kind of, um, I don't know, it's very profound. It's the story of our Christian life and how we give up to Christ and how ultimately he saves us. So that was really, really cool how that worked out. So anyway, this is what that chart looks like. And so we put it into our outline like this. I went ahead and had this pre-typed up for them so that they could just fill in the blank knowing that we weren't gonna get to the whole thing. So we had, again, our main, our, our thesis. Everyone, I'm oh, sorry, Crispin should have taken the oath, becoming Bear's bond servant. So here we're gonna get to our refutation. So the green is um, the viewpoint of the person writing the paper, the one who is persuading that yes, Crispin should take the oath. The red is the viewpoint of the opposing argument. So Crispin should not have taken the oath. Reason number one, Bear was dangerous. Now on the actual outline in the book, it says that you're going to um, say your counter thesis and then your counter proof one, and then you're gonna give a summary of support for reason one. This doesn't have to be just a single statement. So we did list three reasons that went underneath this counter proof. So we can summarize that into a single sentence. You can develop it further into multiple sentences. So that's up to you and the writing style of your child. So here's what that looks like. We have 
Um, I kind of put all three of our reasons together into one. Uh, we had said that he seemed like he was crazy, he was a stranger, and he had a knife. So I put that he's a crazy stranger with a knife. So it'll be better written when we go to write our actual paper. Now here's our counter. And after all, he is in a church and he's singing a beautiful hymn, which gives indication that he is worshiping God and could possibly be a good man that would help him, that would help Crispin. So now we go to our second counter. Crispin would not be free. He would lose independence and life would become more difficult. Our counter to that, um, we're going to refute, actually, the second counter argument. So we're going to refute it and Bear ends up helping Crispin becoming like a father. And then at the end, it says, because you see how you're going to summarize each of these. Number one, it says summary of support. Summary of support in both of these, you're going to give why that is inadequate. And then down here, summary of refutation. This is where you're just going to wrap the whole thing up and you're going to remind us of both arguments. Uh, neither argument, the fact that Bear is dangerous and that Crispin would not be free, should dissuade Crispin from following Bear and taking the oath. Anyway, so this is where you're just going to wrap it all up and give us a... Um, a reminder of why it's not going, it's not sufficient. These reasons are not sufficient for me to change my mind. Anyway, that's what we did in class. Hopefully this helps you. This, um, the stuff in the textbook is really great. And I love some of the notes that I have here. It talks about how when you argue, um, does your opponent actually understand you? Do you understand your opponent? And if it helps to understand your opponent, it, it, helps you to make a better argument and to be more convincing. And, and that's what we're working towards is having an answer to those who come against us. So this lesson has huge ramifications for our walk um, as Christians and living in the world. And I just think that it would behoove you to spend some time digging into it and helping your student um, learn to make these compelling arguments. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day.